Hi everyone and welcome back to Learner Radiology for case 17 of the Brain Tumor Review Series. Today we're looking at a 77 year old with right upper extremity lack of coordination. So we have some ataxia in that right upper extremity. Right arm not working so good. Here we have some images from an MR through the patient's brain, kind of at the level of the lateral ventricles and insula. On the left we have a flare. In the middle we have T2. On the right, we have what looks like susceptibility, some sort of blood sensitive uh, imaging there, blood or calcium. Here we have pre and post contrast imaging through the same level. We have pre contrast T1, post contrast T1. Maybe see if you feel like there's any enhancement of that lesion there. And here I have a movie through the lesion here, so we're going to just take a look at that. So T2 kind of showing the whole lesion. All right, so hopefully that helped you uh, scroll through the lesion a little bit there. Uh, now, your first question is, what's the most likely diagnosis here? You feel like you're looking at a DNET, lymphoma, GBM, or oligodendroglioma. And then question number two, which genetic abnormality is required to diagnose oligodendroglioma? You have to have MGMT methylation, 1P19Q codeletion, loss of chromosome 7 and 10, or CRIT mutation. So this is the case of oligodendroglioma. This one happened to be a grade two. Now oligodendrogliomas are now diagnosed molecularly um, over histologic features. And these are brain tumors that have an IDH mutation and a 1P19Q codeletion. You must have both of these two to be an oligodendroglioma. If not, and it's a primary glioma, it's an astrocytoma. Now many of these patients are slight, uh, there's a slight male predominance for these. They tend to be uh, kind of middle-aged um, males. The treatment for these is resection and follow-up. Sometimes you'll get uh, chemoradiation at the onset. Sometimes you'll get chemoradiation at the time of recurrence. Uh, so it depends really on the physician preference. Many of these are in the frontal lobes or temporal lobes, uh, tend to be in the, in the hemispheres and supertentorial. Now in imaging, what you'll often see is a heterogeneous and kind of ill-defined mass. You can have calcification, you can have cystic changes. If it's a grade two lesion particularly, you tend to have minimal enhancement. If it's a grade three oligodendroglioma or anaplastic oligodendroglioma, as they're also called, then you may have more enhancement. So here you see the lesion. You have a mass in the left insula here. It's kind of ill-defined, like you do have uh, some decent margins around it, uh, but it's definitely kind of going all the way involving the cortex. Here you see on T2, kind of a similar appearance. On SWI, what you see is these areas of hypointensity. Those are areas of internal calcification. So if you did a CT, you might catch a little bit of calcification there, but SWI is great uh, for seeing those. Here you see your pre and post contrast images. Again, a little bit ill-defined on T1, maybe a little bit of a cystic portion, and uh, not much enhancement there. Perhaps a little bit of hazy enhancement right there, but enhancement's not a predominant feature of this lesion. This is what it looks like when you see an oligodendroglioma. Now your question was about what's the genetic abnormality associated for these. We talked about that. You have to have a 1P19Q codeletion and you have to have an IDH mutation. Now what are these other mutations? MGMT is a DNA repair enzyme. When it's methylated, it doesn't work as well. And so in brain tumors, if you have MGMT methylation, you don't respond as well to DNA damage and which is uh, the mechanism of effect for radiation. So MGMT methylated tumors do better with radiation. Loss of chromosome seven and 10 are now genetic markers of glioblastoma. So if you have patients that have these and they look like lower grade uh, astrocytomas, they will upgrade them to GBM if they have these genetic features. Crit mutations are associated with cavernous malformations. And so that was formerly called a CCM. And uh, so if you have that mutation, you tend to have multiple familial cavernous malformations. So just be aware, these are a few of the mutations that you might see in a neuro section of one of these exams. Thanks again for tuning in for case 17. We have three more cases to go in the Brain to Review series. Uh, so thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys uh, like, be sure to uh, hit the thumbs up on the video. Be sure to subscribe and so you get notified when other videos come out. Got a few more videos coming out this spring and uh, hopefully you guys if you see a brain tumor on the exam you'll be ready to go you'll just get it it'll be you'll be easy money thank you guys for tuning in